Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are taking a little bit of a break from aquariums and we're looking at some terrariums, which I absolutely love as well, especially when they are made for one of my absolute favorite creature, the praying mantis. Some of you that maybe are coming from the Orca channel might know I have a thing with praying mantises, I absolutely love them, and my absolute wish was to have an orchid mantis. Spoilers, I do. <laughs> but that's a different story. So throughout the years, I've actually had the honor to actually save some wild praying mantises, given I know they don't live that long, but you know what? I, I, I save stuff, I don't know. My mom found a praying mantis once at the end of autumn. She was missing three legs. She looked like something attacked her. It was going into winter, she would have died because, you know, they live a season. We took her in and my dad got her fish bait worms and they transformed into flies and we fed her flies. She lived all the way up to spring. And you know what? She was a wonderful pet. I have never had an insect sit on my hand, clean itself and just, just chill on my hand while I'm watching TV. Never! Praying mantises can do that. And she was a big, big mantis. And she would like learn when we came into the room, we would get her out and she would love to sit on our hand, maybe because it was warm. I went on a tangent, but I had to tell it to you guys because you don't know how much I love praying mantises. I don't love them as much as to take them from the wild and put them in a cage. I don't do that. But there are some mantises that are in the trade already and I would love to have some and, you know, just give them a life with me. They're non-existent in Cyprus. It is what it is. But recently I did find a place which sometimes brings stuff. Anyway, the mantis that I'm gonna show you today is not from Cyprus. It is a mantis that I purchased from the Netherlands. What did you bring from the Netherlands as souvenirs? An insect. So today is the story of Albert, which is the name we gave this praying mantis because the, the shop we got it from in Amsterdam, it was situated on a street called Albert something. Now that I look on the maps, it wasn't called Albert something. Maybe the tram station was called that way. I don't know. We named it Albert after one of the streets in Amsterdam. Anyway, so we're gonna also put together this little exoterra terrarium and talk a little bit about it as well, talk a little bit about the mantis and we're gonna do the outro of the video as well. I hope you'll enjoy it. We will probably on this channel have some terrarium videos coming as well uh, and today we're just gonna start with praying mantises because I, I just have history with them. So this is the story of Albert. We're gonna come back at the end of the video with the final thoughts. Alright, so the terrarium is the smallest in the Exoterra range. One thing I do actually enjoy about it, apart from the overall shape Exoterra makes pretty great terrariums in my opinion, is the fact that it comes with a background. It's not the greatest, but if you wish you can paint it, but I will leave it as it is. It has a front opening door and it also has a net which is easily detachable on top of it. Now, because I'm gonna use plants in this little terrarium, I want some soil. And I'm using some Repti soil again from... Oh, I think this one is Zoomit. I'm not sure of the brand anymore. Anyway, you'll have all of the products on the screen and also I will link them to you from Amazon down below in the description if you wanna check them out. As for plants, I only can fit about two plants without making it very crowded. I use sort of an ivy and also a Fetonia. And I also added a small spider root there that I had from one of my terrariums and that is actually enough decoration and vegetation for a praying mantis. Now praying mantises don't really travel much, they do actually really like branches and I find they do really like foliage as well because they typically change their position and wait for their next spray and it makes things just a little bit more natural for them. Right, so I am picking up Albert on a stick because I didn't know if he would freak out with my hands. He is not the tamest, let's say, of insects, but he became better, but I decided not to risk it, especially because he can be fast if he wants to. I also gave him a fly to reward him and distract him <laughs> from the process 
and here he is enjoying his fly in his new little house. One thing I want to point out: in some of the footage, you will see he doesn't have wings. After he molted, I realized that his wings had a problem. You can see that they're not fully stretched out, and especially the top part is not fully stretched out. I don't know why that happened. After he molted, his wings are a little crumbly and not straight. Now I looked on the internet, and yes, that can definitely happen. I don't seem to find a particular reason for it. It is the first time I have a praying mantis do that, and obviously, if this insect would have been in nature, probably wouldn't have survived as much. But obviously, in captivity, when we are providing food, there is really no danger for the praying mantis. He can live his life as long as he's scheduled to live it without much issues, since we don't have predators. So even if his wings are not perfect, I'm absolutely fine with it as long as he's, you know, not in pain and stuff, which he doesn't seem to be. He doesn't seem to mind it at all. He doesn't use his wings at all. I'm absolutely fine, and obviously, I'm providing the food. There are no predators. But yeah, it is the first time that I. See See a praying mantis with these ruffled wings. Now, if you know more about it and what causes it, leave me a comment down below. In his previous enclosure, before he molted, I did make sure to provide adequate moisture, adequate food, water, all of those things. So I don't think it's something in the environment that made this happen. It could be something genetic. You know, we're dealing with insects in nature. The insects that are not. Perfectly adapted, quote unquote, don't survive. But in the hobby, you know, we keep everybody because we love everybody. So sometimes you can have some anomalies, I would say. Anyway, Albert seems to be very, very happy in his new enclosure, and he is to this day. He really enjoys it. He is now about three centimeters or so. So for a three centimeter insect that doesn't really travel much. And doesn't fly. I do believe this is a great enclosure, and it does look professional and well made. I really, really like it. But for the future, if I will ever buy another Exoterra, I will probably go for the taller one, just to account for the fact that maybe in the future I will have. Female praying mantises, which are typically bigger. Alrighty, so that's about enough narration for today. Let's wrap this video up. Righty, here we are again. Yes, this is quite a. Tiny, tiny terrarium. I think it's mostly suited for tarantulas and other types of insects. But Albert is actually a very, very tiny mantis. He is also a male. I was shocked that his first molt, like I got him like super tiny. I thought, oh, it's a baby. It's gonna live longer.、Uh, no, he molted and already had wings. That's because he's a male. Typically, with mantises, not sure if in all cases, but typically, when you have a male, you will have a shorter lifespan, and also the male will be tinier as well, and they don't have as many、uh, stages, let's say, molting stages, as a female does. So that's the only drawback. Albert is a male, and I love him, and I don't care, but he's not gonna live as long as a female. I'm gonna try. To care for him as best as I can,、um, but because he's so tiny as a species and also he's a male, he's suited for this enclosure. He doesn't go around climbing. Now I would get him out, but he's fast. But he doesn't really enjoy to sit on my hand. I got him once out and I put him back. He didn't seem to necessarily enjoy the experience, so I'm not gonna put him through that. He's gonna stay here. He does seem to enjoy hunting for flies. I like to put flies in there and let him find them on his own.、Um, but other than that, yes, I think this enclosure is really, really pretty. I would not buy it for bigger mantises. I think it's just not enough. I think it's slightly small. They do have exoterras. Actually, have the same enclosure, same dimensions, but it's. Uh, taller. I'm not entirely sure how tall. That would be a little bit more adequate for praying mantises. But since Albert is just so tiny, you know, there's no need. It would also be very suitable for male orchid mantises as well, which do not grow large either. And I have a male orchid mantis. I wish it was female, but apparently it's a male. Only because they live longer. That's it, and I want to, you know, enjoy them longer. But I do believe for small mantises, it's quite a cute enclosure. Not very expensive either, and it's just a very nice terrarium gift. If you like the look of something already 
you know professionally made you can definitely do something DIY you can definitely go for those acrylic enclosures which I do have on this channel I think we assembled one I'll put the link down below it's the one where I keep the orchid mantis now I will make a terrarium for it as well eventually maybe an exoterra I don't know um, but you can definitely go for something like that for small mantises as well but I just wanted to have this one because it looks pretty maybe in the future you know after Albert is not with us anymore maybe I can use it for other things I would probably use it only for praying mantises or maybe tarantulas I don't know I'm not a tarantula person you should let me know but from what I read that's what it's suited for definitely not suited for lizards maybe I, mean, I would not put a crested gecko here maybe a juvenile until he grows but other than that a mature I I don't know what mature lizard would fit in here again if you have some suggestions put them in the comments below but it's tiny it is a tiny tiny enclosure either you don't put anything in here either you make you know maybe an isopod culture maybe something like that it can work for that why not but it's quite suitable for small praying mantises maybe even baby praying mantises righty so that is about it on albert and i hope you've enjoyed today's video stay tuned for more aquariums and terrarium content i will reserve like this channel for my animal let's say side of the hobby in the orchid channel just for orchids i usually when i post something that is not orchids on that channel nobody watches <laughs> so i'm gonna put everything here uh, because i really really enjoy terrariums as well and yeah thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today and i'll see you all next time bye